Amen, amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Elder Travis Craig of the Greater Royal Worship Center, coming to you with tonight's Bible study, tonight's Walk in the Word. And tonight we'll be studying uh, from the Gospel of John. We'll be in John, the 21st chapter, the very last chapter of the Gospel. And we'll be studying verses 1 through 14. And our title lesson tonight is entitled, Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias. Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias. Coming to us from John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 14. And we're going to try to get through this study without a lot of coughing and hacking. Um... But if it if I if it should come up on me, we may have to end this one sooner than later. But stay around. After the intro, we'll dive right into it. So I will see you on the other side. Today is your fifty Today is your Blessings, y'all. Blessings, y'all. God bless you, Mother Mother Wilson. I see you. God bless you, Apostle. I see you. God bless you, Mother Blackwell. I see you. I sure missed y'all on yesterday. I thought I was going to be able to make it in there, but my coughing, I don't know, it, it, it just um, overtook me. So uh, I'm, I'm medicated today. I, my sister on yesterday reminded me of the Mucinex. So I grabbed some of that. I've been taking some of um, uh, the uh, pills of the uh, Theraflu, cold and flu pills. God bless you, Minister Alicia. I see you. So I've been uh, taking, I've been on that on uh, all day today. Uh, my wife and I both are out here coughing. But don't worry, we have the home COVID test. We've taken that and come out negative on that. But I'm thinking... It may be a sinus infection or something, but I got to go to the doctor because I take the pills and it, and it do good for a, a short amount of time. And then it's right back to me coughing and hacking up phlegm and stuff. So, um, yeah, y'all just keep me in your prayers. I, I certainly will appreciate it. But tonight, 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 we're going to get into this gospel. You know, I pray the Lord touch me that I'm able to get through this without a lot of coughing and things. But um The Gospel of John, the Gospel of John, John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 14, Uh, and it's entitled, Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias. Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias. Amen. John 21, verses 1 through 14. Amen. 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 Bless your mother, Blackwell. Amen. And Apostle, don't forget, I, I got your watch from last week, man. I'm thinking about taking it to the jeweler, man, so, so I can get it sized for my wrist. I'm just, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 14. Amen. 
and it reads, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he, showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon and Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not, they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when, Pe when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat upon him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come unto the land, they saw a fire of coals that they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid therein, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land, full of great fishes, and an hundred and fifty three. And for all there were, there were so many, yet was not the net broken. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. Now, excuse me, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Amen. So reads the words of our Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm going to need y'all, you know, to drop, drop a comment or a question if you have one. You know, let us know what you're thinking and, and, um, and how you perceive this lesson because there's a lot that has been, that is said in these uh, in this uh, passage of scripture here, and it begins here, it says, after these things, the, the, the these things that it's talking about in verse 1 is the, the crucifixion has taken place. We read that on last week in, verse, in chapter 19, and verse 20 covers the resurrection. This is after the crucifixion and the resurrection. Uh, the disciples are now uh, waiting, or excuse me, at the at the Sea of Tiberias, okay? And, and I want us to understand, because we, we get these names, and, it, and it, we allow these names to throw us off course, but the Sea of Tiberias is the same body of water, which is also called the Sea of Galilee, which is also the same body of water that's called in Luke, the Lake of Gennesaret. And I learned through my study on this, on this time that that same body of water in Joshua, Joshua 13 and 27, is also called uh, the Sea of Chinnereth. Uh, so we got one body of water called by four different names. The Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, the, the Lake of Gennesaret, and the Sea of Chinnereth. All the, all the same body of water because Jesus' ministry took place around the Sea of Galilee. It was a, a relatively small area in which Jesus traveled and did his earthly ministry. Amen. Let's see. It says, there were, there were together Simon Peter 
and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Now, John names seven of his disciples. Um, Nathanael is also uh, called Bartholomew in, in the Synoptic Gospels. So, you know, we sometimes, uh, when we start to hear names, we, we get it confused and not understanding that one disciple might be called by his uh, surname. Another disciple might be called by uh, his family name. But Nathaniel and Bartholomew, you know, most scholars will agree is the same person. And Thomas being called Didymus. Didymus is, is in the Hebrew name, it, it means twin. And also, I, I've learned that Thomas also is just another name for twin. So that may not have been his his um, true name, but what, rather what they called him. Let me read some of this. Let me read this introduction and get into some of this commentary because it teaches us a lot. I mean, and what I want us to what I want us to learn. Well, before I get to read, let, let me let's read the aim because we'll see what the Sunday school lesson is is aiming at teaching us. It says here facts. To confirm that Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day and appeared to his disciples. The principle is to recognize that Jesus' resurrection was physical and guarantees life to all who believe in him. In the application, to know the power of Jesus' resurrection by firmly trusting that he is the giver of life to those who believe in him. Amen. So now um, we have these disciples that are on the water uh, uh, fishing. Okay. Um, Jesus has been resurrected. Uh, John here says this is now the third time that Jesus has appeared unto the disciples. Okay, Thomas was not there the first time, uh, then, but then the second time Jesus appeared, Thomas was there. And, and when Jesus appeared the second time, <coughs> when Jesus appeared the second time, you know, that's when Thomas said, you know, um, or Jesus says to Thomas, um, you know, look at my hands. Look at my feet. Look at my side. Showing Thomas the wounds in his hands and in his feet. And, and I, I believe Thomas gets a bad rap because, you know, we, we know him as Doubting Thomas. But I don't believe he was doubting uh, um, in unbelief, but only wanting to see the evidence in that which Jesus had showed the other disciples. So because of that, he asked to see Jesus' hands and his feet you know, and the piercing of his side, you know, because let us not forget, Thomas was not at the cross. He had only heard. Yeah, John was there. John saw it. John saw Jesus nailed to the cross. John saw his feet nailed to the cross. John saw the, the soldier pierce him in the side with the sword. So Thomas only heard, and Thomas is only asking, you know, Lord, you know, can I see? I, I just want to See, not, not that I don't believe their word, but I need to see for myself, you know. Amen. Uh, but let's, uh, let me read some of this introduction. It says here, the resurrection of Christ is that, is that the very heart of our Christian faith. It is essential to the gospel. <coughs> Christ died for our sins, but without his resurrection, we would still be trapped in them. Depending on how they are counted, there are about a dozen recorded appearances, appearances of Jesus after his resurrection. In some cases, the details are not clear. For example, Paul says that Christ appeared to all the apostles in 1 Corinthians 15 and 7. But we are not sure whether this refers to an event recorded in the Gospels or to another appearance. Paul records an appearance of Jesus to him on the Damascus Road. 
although that occurred after Jesus' ascension in verse 8. And there may have been other unrecorded appearances. Amen. <clears throat> so we have unsuccessful fishing. <clears throat> we have unsuccessful fishing. And I want us, as we read through these scriptures, let us forget what we think we know. You know, let's just take it in and, and um, just take it in and, and uh, just just pick the facts apart. The facts. It says here. All right. After these things refers to the events in chapter 20. These include Peter and John's initial visit to the empty tombs. That's in verses 1 through 10. Jesus' appearance to Mary Magdalene in verses 11 through 18. And Jesus' <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> appearance to the ten disciples. And then his appearance a week later. <coughs> mm. Amen. All right, let's let me see if we can break this down. Um, <clears throat> Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also will go with thee. <clears throat> ah, I'm trying to work through this, y'all. In verse 3, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, mm, Man, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Remember when Jesus first met them. When Jesus first um, called the disciples, let me say it like that. He, he, he seen them after a night of fishing in which they had caught nothing. So now we have the same scenario or as some might say, deja vu. Jesus happens upon them. They're after a night of fishing in which they've caught nothing. And when we understand the ancient uh, civilization or the biblical civiliza civilization, they would fish at night and uh, cast their nets in the sheet in the sea uh, in shallow water so that the fish would be trapped between the sand at the bottom and the net falling upon them. Amen. And, and what can we learn from this? I mean, uh, physically, we, we, we find out that when Jesus calls us to fish. <coughs> We can take from this that when we're called to fish, because Jesus told them, I will make you fishers of men. So when we're called to uh, to share the gospel, to share the good news, we're not called to um, we're not called to fish with a line. You know how some fishermen go out and fish. They fish with a line. They one fish at a time. Bloop, bloop. Nope. Jesus called them to fish, catch men with a net. That, and that way we said, we can't say, I'm going to preach to that one and not that one. I'm going to share the news with that one, but not that one. We can't judge who it is that the gospel might hit. So that's why when we go out to uh, share the good news, we're, 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 we're throwing a broad net. We're throwing it out there for everybody to hear. And whomever God will call through his word, that, that's who he will call. So we, we can't be selective in the, on the in the or on the people who it is that we choose to share the good news of the gospel with. That's what we can we can uh, take from this this section of scripture when Jesus calls us to be fishers of men. 
No, no. We we are the fish with a net. We're not going out doing no uh no no specified specified or or personalized fishing. No, we're casting it for all all that might come into that net to hear and be called by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. It says here, but when the morning was now come, verse four, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Now, <clears throat> it's hard to say why, because we don't know what the weather conditions were. It could be foggy. You know, it's early morning. We know how um, sometimes in the morning dew, we get a, a, a mist on the land. It could have been obscuring the view of Jesus. Or let us not forget, Jesus is now in his glorified body. Or it could be that Jesus was causing their eyes not to recognize him. We don't know what the cause was. God bless you, missionary Blackwell. I see you. God bless you, missionary Vern. I see you. God bless you, missionary Angie. I see you. Amen. We don't know what the uh, uh, reason was that the disciples did not recognize Jesus immediately. But understand this, when Jesus told them, oh, you, you ain't caught nothing, drop your net on the right side of the boat. <coughs> and when they did, <coughs> immediately the net filled with fish. Remember, John, James, and Peter was there the first time that Jesus called them and was on the boat with Peter. So John immediately said to Peter, it is the Lord. <clears throat> and Peter knowing that it was the Lord <clears throat> it says here he was naked okay let, let us not take that as literally he was naked <clears throat> but <clears throat> but uh, Peter Oh, excuse me. Hang on one sec. All right, excuse me. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of under the. Hey Amen. Thank you, Mother, Mother Wilson. I would do that right after I get off. But I've been taking uh, Mucinex and some uh, uh, Theraflu. <coughs> also, so um, trying to get through this. That's why. I, that's why I didn't want to be in service on yesterday because I know people wouldn't appreciate me coughing on them. <coughs> Amen. Uh, but let me see if we can get through this, though. Um, okay, so John immediately recognized it, it to be the Lord. And he said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, the Bible says uh, Peter put on his, his, his outer robe or outer, outer garment because it says here he was naked. But he might have been in uh, <coughs> like his... His, his underclothes, if you will. Because remember, he's around he's around all men. <coughs> ah. He's around all men, but knowing that it is the Lord, Peter threw on his his outer garments and jumped in the into the sea to swim toward Jesus. <coughs> And I believe that this is <coughs> at least the first time in John's gospel that Peter met Jesus. And it's, at, it's, in, it's in Galilee. Because remember, when Jesus saw Mary Magdalene at the tomb, Jesus told her, go tell the disciples and Peter, I'll see them in Galilee. And here he is now uh, in Galilee by the sea and the scripture is called the Sea of Tiberias. But remember what I said is one body of water known by four different names. The Sea of Tiberias, 
the Sea of Galilee, the Lake of Gennesaret, and the Lake of Chinnereth. That and the Lake of Chinnereth is in the Gospel of John, uh, the Lake of Chinnereth is in the Book of Joshua, Joshua thirteenth chapter, verse twenty seven, and Luke cha chapter five verse one. Luke talks about uh, the Lake of Gennesaret. Four different names, same body of water. The Sea of uh, we we most uh, we best know it as the Sea of Galilee. So, <clears throat> when, G when John saw them gather the fish, Peter jumped immediately, put on his robe or his tunic, and jumped in the water. And, and that, that in itself says something. When you know you're in the presence of a holy God, mm, th there's a way we, we ought to come to God. You know, it, Peter didn't say, okay, you know, I, I got my chest out. I, I don't have my best on. Let me go see my Jesus uh, just as I am. No, Peter said, let me go in my best, you know, as we are to come. Yeah, we are to come as we are, but we also are to come in our best. I mean, if the best we could do is come in some holy jeans, you know, in a wrinkled shirt, then that's the best we could do. God says, come as you are. But if you got that three-piece party suit hanging in the in the uh, closet, but you want to go in some sweats, you know, because you don't feel like getting dressed up, you know, God said, you ain't doing me no favor, you know, and I understand, you know, Jesus saves souls, not clothes, but hey, if, if you can't come um, in reverence of a holy God, mm, then who, who, who is your idol? Because when you go out to meet that, that bay or that boo, you know, <coughs> we get <coughs> as the old as the um old old folks used to say, <coughs> we get dressed up to the nines, you know, we clean. Fine. You know, when you go out to meet your boo or your bae, you know, you you trying to go in your finest. But when you come to meet the holy God, you you know, some people don't even put in the effort. Knowing that they got better at home. And that'd be the first line they want to scream when they say, come as you are. Okay, but that's, I guess that's a lesson for another day. Amen, amen. Amen. Now, it says here, where, where was I at here? Okay, the Bible says that. <coughs> that they were about 200 cubits from the land. <coughs> 200 cubits is about 100 yards, okay? 100 yards for my, for my sports fans is about the length of a football field. That's how far they were from the land. And Peter just took off. He said, I, I can't wait to see my God. Let me throw my robe on. Let me dive in here and get the, and get the stroke in. You know, I got to go see my God. Now, we, you, you may remember, Peter, last time he seen Jesus uh, alive in Scripture, was that, that third time that he had denied the Lord. The Scripture said, because on the third time, when the cock crew, the Scripture said that Jesus' eyes and Peter's eyes locked, and, and Peter ran away in shame and crying. OK, because he had just done something that he swore, you know, he he had already told Jesus, no, nah, no, nah, Lord, I, I'm your ride or die. You know, ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. They got to take me first. Uh, no, nah, we ain't having that. But yet. When they took Jesus, yeah, he, he pulled his knife out in the heat of the in the heat of the moment, cut a man's ear off. But once they had Jesus. And. and, and he saw it was for real. And I want us to understand, and we can't be too hard on Peter because we know when somebody is with us that we think is strong and we don't expect them to fall, you know, we can say all day long, man, I got your back. I'm with you. I'm down for this. We're going to fight it out. We're going to do whatever we got to do. But when you see that, that person that you feel is strong, fight. I mean, go down or the fight is knocked out of them. 
you know, all of a sudden you feel inadequate. And, and I imagine this is how, that's how Peter must have felt. Because the, let us not forget, they saw Jesus raise, raise Lazarus from the dead. They saw Jesus make a lame man that could not walk to walk again. They saw Jesus to uh, give blind, um, excuse me, give sight to the blind. So now for him to be taken captive, I mean, he had to have every, every sense of reality knocked from him. You know, Lord, I, I, I've seen you speak and, and the waves lay down and the wind got quiet. But yet these men can take you? Hmm. So now Peter here or, or recognizes with John that it's Jesus. P Peter's trying to get to his Lord because, you know, he, he, he must have a, and this is my imagination, he, he must have a, a, an explosion of emotions going on within him. Because the last time I saw you, Lord, I, I denied you. Oh, let, let me get to you and, 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 and you know, j just to be close to you. Y'all know that song, just to be close to you. All right, all right, all right. But, but Peter had to get to Jesus. And uh, when you read further on in, in this chapter, chapter 21, this is the chapter that Peter says, or Jesus asks Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. Then, Pe then Jesus says, then feed my lambs. Okay. Uh, uh, Peter, yes, Lord, do you love me more than these? Lord, yes, you know I love you. Then, then feed my sheep. Okay. Peter, do, do you love me more than these? Lord, you know I love you. I would do anything for you, Lord. Then, then feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied him three times, Jesus gave him the opportunity to accept him three times. And we all know that the, the number three is is. Uh, is is completion is divine completion and the biblical number three stands for divine completion so Peter, Jesus was telling Peter um, or giving Peter the chance to affirm uh, who he is in Christ and also allowing letting Peter to know that even though you denied me you know I, I, I have not denied you and, and I have never turned my back on you. My goodness. Let's see what's up. What else? What else? Uh -oh. Amen. It says here. And Peter went up. Okay. Uh, verse number nine. As soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals. <coughs> <coughs> And fish laid thereon, and bread. Okay. Jesus has already asked them, have you caught any fish? You know, knowing the answer, no. Okay, well, drop your net on the right side. Okay, they did that, and they caught fish. But yet, when they get to the land, now they see a fire with fish and bread. Okay, Jesus is saying to them, okay, um, Bring up the fish which you which you caught. Verse number ten. He said, "Bring what you caught and put it with mine. You know that we might sit and eat." Now, if we remember, the last time they ate a meal with Jesus was the Last Supper. So now this is the, I guess we can call this the last breakfast because they have been out all night fishing. It's now morning time. And, and ain't that funny how you know? Just as Jesus came walking to them on the water in the fourth watch of the night, after they fished all night in the early morning, Jesus appears in the fourth watch of the night. You know, the, the Bible tells us, you know, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Oh, oh that's why, you know, my God. It's just something about when the sun is about to come up, you know, that that those of us that have a, 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 a thirst for life, a thirst for God, a thirst for the, the ways of God, it just brings a joy to our hearts.
that that to know that the sun is upon us. And, and, and in case you ain't caught it yet, I, I, I ain't talking about the sun S U N. I'm talking about the sun S O N. Oh yeah, it's a joy to know He's upon us. He's with us. He's caring for us. Jesus is telling them, Get, bring that which you which you have caught and, and and add it with this that I have already prepared, and, and let's have a feast. And I want us to understand because in the biblical days, they, they, for a person or for a thing to be a ghost or a spirit, a ghost or a spirit couldn't eat real food. So Jesus is eating with them, showing them I'm real. Jesus is eating with them. Show, I, yep, I, this is my glorified body. I'm real. You know, I, I, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know, I'm here with you. I love you. And, and this is Jesus just communing with his disciples. And I don't know, it, it, just the feeling that I can just you know, think of in my mind must have been, you know, just explosive, you know. Um, wow. Let's see here. Let me read some of this commentary. All right, returning to fishing. Mm -hmm. Trying to see. Famine to feast. All right. After daybreak, Jesus stood on the shore, waiting for the men to come back in. They did not recognize him yet. Perhaps it was because they were too far out to distinguish facial features, or maybe it was too foggy to see clearly, or maybe the Lord had clouded their eyes supernaturally. No fisherman who has spent a whole night fishing without catching anything wants to be asked if he caught any fish. But that is exactly what happened here. Knowing the answer to his own question, Jesus asked them if they had caught anything. When the disciples answered, this unidentified figure with a no, he told them to cast their net out to the right side of the boat with nothing to lose they cast their nets and caught so many fish. And let's just stop there. Think about it. Peter was a, a professional fisherman, as was James and John. Just think about it. Whatever, whatever it is you do at your job, that's what you've been trained to do. Imagine somebody that don't know the job you're doing, somebody that ain't been trained in the skills you've been trained in, happen to walk up to you while you working and suggest you do do it this way. You know, now nah, I don't know nothing about it, but just do it this way. You know, what you going to tell that person, are you really? Dude, get out of here. You know, be gone. <laughs> you know, you ain't going to take a, a somebody that don't know the job like you know the job. You're not going to take them seriously. Yet, when Jesus says, well, just cast it on the other side. You know, they, 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 they did so. They, you know, I guess we ain't got nothing to lose, you know. We ain't got no fish. We've been throwing it all night long. We, we, we done did on that side, you know, earlier. But, well, we, we do it one more time. Why not? But, uh, of course, uh, them being obedient to God's word. And, and that's what we have to understand. When we're obedient to God's word, we get um, we get results. We get uh, blessings. We get blessings. So now, it says here. Uh, with nothing to lose, they cast their nets and caught so many fish that they could not draw the net in. Again, deja vu from the first time Jesus called his first disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John. At this moment, the light went on in John's head as he exclaimed, It is the Lord. He had seen this happen before in Luke 5, you know, uh, and no one else could bring such a large catch as Jesus. Same thing, 
They got so many fish this time. Same thing happened in Luke chapter 5, where, where it's called the, the Lake of Gennesaret. You know, when Jesus was first teaching and healing uh, in, in, in um, uh, I want to say Cana, but it may, may have been Galilee. But uh, <clears throat> same thing when they followed Jesus' direction, when Peter followed Jesus' direction, caught so much fish that he couldn't handle the net alone and had to call his partners, James and John, to come and help him to draw the net of fish. He had seen this happen before, and no one else could bring such a large catch as Jesus. As far as John was concerned, this could not be anyone else. When Peter heard this, he threw on his tunic, jumped in the water right away. He wanted to get to Jesus as soon as possible. The others came along in the boat, dragging a net full of fish from around 200 cubits, or 100 yards away from the shoreline. So again, <clears throat> this is the final chapter in the Gospel of John. The final chapter in which uh, John, uh, in which his disciples would see Jesus before his ascension back to God the Father, back to the right hand of the throne of God. Okay, um, and Jesus is yet still uh, showing his loving his love and kindness to his disciples. <coughs> Yet still showing his love and kindness to his disciples that they might know uh, that he is yet still all powerful and he holds the keys to life and death. You know, the ground, say, the ground couldn't keep him. The grave couldn't keep him. And death couldn't hold him hostage. No, he's, I'm back. I'm back, and I'm and I'm me, and I still love y'all. He said, and, and I'm still going to break bread with you. Mm. And, and if you stay connected to me, and this is, you know, we can infer all this from, from the, the passages of Scripture. Jesus is saying, and just as he says in, in John 15, uh, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. He said, and if you stay connected, you know, if the branches stay connected to the, brine, the vine, then you can survive. He said, because you can't survive without the vine. And that's what Jesus is, is, is letting them to know. Because we could infer, because they had gone back to fishing. And some has, has even inferred this in the past. Because the disciples went back to fishing, that they had actually turned their backs on ministry and was ready to go back to a full-time life of fishing rather than preaching the gospel. Now, I, I, I don't know how true that may have been or may not have been, but we've all hit those uh, points of life. You know, we call it those, those failing points in life that, that we have to make a decision. You know, uh, are we going to continue on this path or are we going to adjust, make a change and press through? You know, so th th this is one of those those moments, I believe, in life that we all have to confront within ourselves. Are, are, are we going to do it God's way or are we going to turn our backs on God and do and try to do it our way? Um just a hint, you know, our way, if it ain't God's way, usually is not the right way. And I ain't going to say usually, I'm going to say never is the right way. And I don't care how much success it might look like you have. Mm, God got something better. Amen. Amen. So now. It says here, when the disciples reached the land, there was a charcoal fire already going with fresh fish being cooked over the flame, along with bread. Since the fire was already made and the fish cleaned and cooking before the disciples arrived with their catch, 
Jesus had apparently already procured these fish on his own. Jesus then told them to bring some of the fish they caught. So Peter went and brought the net from the boat. It held 153 large fish. In spite of the great number of fish, the net was not torn. Jesus then invited them to come eat. None of the disciples dared to ask who this was, nor did they need to. They knew it was Jesus, and Jesus fed them the fish and the bread he had prepared for them. He will always, excuse me, we will always be satisfied if we will let God feed us. This can have literal application as here, but more often it's in, it will involve spiritual nour nourishment. Jesus is the bread of life and we partake of him by faith. Amen, amen, because it's by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, but it is the gift of God, mm, not of man, so that no man can boast on, on how you got saved. Uh, well, you got saved just like I got saved because it was God's gift, because us in our own uh, um, righteousness, in our own flesh, we ain't worthy. We, we are not worthy, period. But because of God's grace and mercy and Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we are now deemed redeemed to a holy God. Our lesson closes with the statement that this was the third appearance of Jesus to the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. Amen. We will never run out of strength if we will rely on God's strength. We will never fail if we obey what God says. Doing God's will is a guarantee of success in God's eyes. As we close this quarter, please take a moment and thank the Lord for dying for, for your sins and rising from the dead. Amen. And we all need to Thank God every day for his grace, his mercy, and for thinking about us, sinful man, that he wanted us to become his, his children and not be outside the fold. Amen? Amen. Again, this quarter, this quarter, we've been in the Gospel of John. Next week, we'll start in our... Uh, what's this, the winter quarter? We'll start in our spring quarter. And in that quarter, we'll start in the uh, first book of Corinthians. Oh, yeah. What, what First Lady spoke on uh, last week about the divisions of the church. So next week, we'll start in First Corinthians about on the divisions in the church. And, and we'll see what the Lord will say to us through his scriptures. Amen. Thank you, Mother Blackwell. I just pray I've said something that that you can relate to, something that has given you fresh revelation. And like I said, if you have a comment or a question, you know, put it in the comment section that I, that we all might see and may, be able to glean from, because iron sharpens iron. Amen. Amen, Minister Alicia. This week's lesson reveals Jesus' third appearance to his 11 disciples as a group after his resurrection. And that's that's it. That is it. We all know G Judas wasn't there because Judas had hung himself after betraying Jesus. Amen. So next week, we're going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians. I pray I wasn't too annoying with all my coughing. I thank y'all for putting up with it. Just keep me in prayer. Um, I don't know. I think it may be a sinus infection. I'm going to make me a doctor's appointment and go have them check it out because I keep uh, hitting it with this over-the-counter medicine that, that provide me with temporary relief. And then it's right back to coughing and hacking up phlegm, you know, and... Um, 
Thank you, missionary. Thank you, bless you. Um, so, again, like I said, we've... Uh, amen. Thank you, mother. Amen. Uh, like I said, my wife and I have both... Well, my wife and I have uh, taken a, the COVID test, so... We've tested negative for that, so we know that's not the that's not the issue. Uh, but this, I don't know. I'm believing this is it's a sinus infection. You know, I know I have sinuses and allergies. So um, <clears throat> again, I missed y'all in, in service on yesterday, but I didn't want to be in there coughing on nobody because I know I know if it's me, I wouldn't appreciate it. So I wouldn't want to put you out do that to y'all. You know, Amen. So. That being said, you know what? Oh my goodness, I didn't even pray, but let us let us bow our heads in prayer right now. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for being a gracious and merciful God, Father. We thank you, Lord, for knowing that you are God all by yourself, Father. And knowing, Father, that you were there in the beginning, and you know our beginning from our ending, Father. And from ancient times, things not yet done, Father. But you live in the space of eternity, Father. And this hiccup, which we call time, Father, hmm, is only for a moment in your eyes. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for your word that you've left on record for us that we might study, Father, and know what it is that you require of us, Father, to walk uprightly in your statutes and in your commands, God. And, Father, we ask that you help us, Father, to Stay squarely centered in your will, Father, Father, that we stray not to the left nor to the right, Father. And Lord, as we prepare to leave this broadcast, we ask, Lord, that you keep us in the hollow of your hand, Father, and guide our steps, Father, in your word, Father, that we might be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils, O oh God. And Lord, we ask that you send your angels, Father, down to touch us with infirmity in our bodies, Father. Restore us to whole, God. Bring us to 100%, O oh Father. And if we need a touch in our minds, God, we ask that you transform our minds that we might have the mind of Christ within us, Father. And Father, stir up the spirit that is in us, Father, that we might want you even the more. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Again, I thank you all for hanging out with us. I thank you, Minister Alicia. For, for undergirding me and grounding me and being my rock. <laughs> Amen. And that's my baby. All right, boo. My wife there. Amen. I right, God bless you, Sister Sheltina. Amen. Amen. So uh, don't forget, tune in tonight. Uh, in the 10 o'clock hour, Sister Tyra will be on uh, with a word of scripture, a word of prayer, a song of praise, and whatever God has laid on her heart. And tomorrow, in the seven o'clock hour, House of Prayer, Praise, and Worship would be, would be should, would, will be on uh, with Pastor Fogum. Um, and if you find any value in these online services, we've been doing them for going on two years now, virtually. You know, and God has laid it upon your heart that you want to be a blessing. Amen, Mother, I certainly will. And God has laid it on your heart that you want to be a blessing. You can bless the church uh, by Cash App. That's dollar sign Royal Church. Cash App dollar sign Royal Church. Amen. Amen. With that being said, again, I won't prolong the time. I thank you. Thank you all for putting up with my coughing and sniffling and stuff. And I pray I've said something that will resonate in your hearts. So may God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Until the next time, good night.